There's only one piece left to machine on, on this uh, piece of art that I'm working on, and that's this brass base you see here on the side. And after machining the other parts, I realized that this was just a bit too narrow. I was afraid it was going to be weak and bend, so I beefed it up a little bit and got to work. I got my settings wrong initially on my fly cutter and forgot to update them on my second run. I did finally get it correct though. The finish you get on a fly cutter is just incredible, I mean it's like a mirror. But I did notice the back corner was much rougher. And uh, you'll see this appear again, I think it was because I didn't face the sides, so they weren't clamped well in the vise. So I started uh, machining this out and I just felt it was too aggressive, so I started over. And my second run was much better. I just love the way it looks when it's really throwing chips off, especially brass. One side was just so smooth, and then as you get to the other, you can see how rough this is. And again, I'm pretty sure that's just because I didn't face the sides of the material, so when it was clamped into the vise, maybe the back corner wasn't as supported, so it was vibrating. That's all I can think of. Uh, but it's a good lesson to learn. And then, at this point, I realized I'd made a huge mistake. There was no way this was going to work unless I made some soft jaws or a custom clamp. But I didn't want to do all that. I'm just powering through this project to get it done because I haven't had time to do it the correct way. Just as I suspected, as it tore down enough material, that piece flexed and it popped out of the vise. Not a surprise. So I had to decide, was I going to create the proper fixturing to hold this, or just go back to the drawing board? And I decided to do it the faster way, which was just to go back to the drawing board. So instead of doing it the other way, I'm going to face the uh, this block of brass down to the correct thickness and then just throw it on in some waste material and cut out the shape directly through it. Um, I don't know why I didn't start that way actually. It's less wasteful and probably will work better and ultimately did work better.
time to switch fixturing and take the vise out, which also presents me with the perfect opportunity to clean out a little bit of the, uh, the machine. And it's always so cathartic just to sweep away everything and see the table kind of come back out from under the pile of chips. It just feels good, and it kind of wipes all those failures out of your mind, and so you can start over. See what I mean? Isn't that nice just to have a nice clean table in front of you again? Ready to start over fresh. And so that's what I'm doing. I've got this brass on a plate of aluminum. I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea. And as you can see here, as I'm cutting this first hole, as soon as my end mill hits this aluminum, it snaps. And I'm kind of worried that I'm screwing things up here. But ultimately, uh, I managed to get through it. I threw in a different end mill and cut these holes just fine. And then when I started cutting the outline, I was being a bit too aggressive, as you can see here. So I threw in a different end mill and slowed my feed rate down to about 50%, and everything went perfectly smooth from this point forward. No surprises. And it's done. Uh, just deburred it with a hand tool, and I'm pretty happy with the result. It looks pretty, at least from a few feet away. Now finally, all the machining is, is done for this project. All that's left is some 3D printing. And if I like how it works, then maybe I'll come back and do it the right way with proper fixturing. Thank you.